What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? We are back once again. We are here <laughs> once again, two nights in a row, y'all, as we had our Tuffy Talk show last night. And, uh, you know, thinking back to it, there was a point where I actually brought up the question of, is there a, a possibility of, a, of us choosing a red shirt MJ for the rest of the season and moving forward, Brennan? Of course, time we were saying, no, you know, you got to move forward with MJ as long as he can. Um, you know, you're you're three and one with him. You know, we got to keep moving. And then, boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> 12 hours later. 12 hours later, boom, shot go I'll do a text from Greg. Please say yes. the numbers aren't true. <laughs> So as always, y'all, with any Tuffy Talk Live show, especially this one, is we do not have any tweets of the week lined up. We do not have any mailbag lined up. We literally just wanted to get on because just like the rest of you, we were definitely shocked at the news for sure of, mm-hmm. of MJ Norris. Uh, well, again, we, 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 we weren't blindsided, some, some yeah. of us, but we weren't. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely crazy it actually happened. Let's put it that way. So, um, so so we're just wanting to try and get some answers, trying to figure some of these out, things out like you guys are. So um, we'll definitely focus a lot on your comments, your questions here today. So any comments, questions, thoughts, we will literally discuss every single one of them here today um, and uh, comment can on I, this. Can I throw something real quick? Go for it, Greg. Everyone in the chat, we want to hear from you. Let's keep it civil. All right. No, no bashing, nothing, you know, decisions have been made. Let's respect people, um, whether it's their opinion, whatever it is that MJ has decided, um, you know, it's all about love at Wolfpack Nation and we try to keep that positivity. So go for it, brother. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, so again, let, let, let's, you know, just kind of start it from the top and, and, and work our way. So, uh, you know, first of all, Eli right here with the, well, there goes our season probably. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, and I, I really do want to say this first and foremost, that, that honestly, in my opinion, it couldn't have worked out that this news happened after a better game in terms of the fact that mm-hmm. like now that you saw what you did with Brandon Armstrong, now that you saw the, again, a reminder of that running ability that he has, that just MJ just hasn't had so far this season. Um, again, I mean, just just remind everybody, Brandon Armstrong was still the leading rusher before even, even after the Clemson game. Passer he, too. I, he, yeah, and passer, even though he hadn't started for three games. Like, you know, just keep that in mind of how uh, effective he was as a runner. And keeping in mind as well the fact that, I mean, how hard Brennan fought in that Miami game, how much the team obviously appreciated uh, what he was doing. Seeing, like, you know, him him getting, you know, all the he- helmet taps on the sidelines was awesome to see. And once again, the fans even buying into Brennan Armstrong as well. So I think if there's a time – where you can easily, you know, kind of lean back into that Brian Armstrong belief, it would be right now. And especially because of the fact that people saying, well, like Brian Armstrong struggled, you know, to start the season. And yeah, there, but the one thing which I'll say to that, and I, from everybody I've talked to, it's been a, a pretty much consistent feedback across the board. The offense has changed significantly from the time Brian Armstrong was starting quarterback to now. Uh, I honestly think that to start the season, it was a lot of kind of designing around the hope that guys like Bradley Rosner, Julian Gray, uh, Porter Rooks would take that step and be an impact player. And I think that it we, we recently just kind of came to realization it's probably not happening, you know. And, and again, th- there still is going to be opportunity for those guys to make an impact, but we can't rely on it. Like guys like Kevin Exception, who have absolutely balled out, we need to find a way to get that guy 15 touches a game, you know. Uh, uh, you know, guys, again, like guys like MJ Morris, even Trent Penix as well, who has shown like we need to find a way to get those guys the ball. Um, so that, that's kind of my original thought on it. So and the last thing which I'll add, I really do think the guys will rally around Brandon Armstrong. I think that, again, what they saw from Brennan on Saturday, combined with the fact that, I mean, this guy is going to have four more guarantee games in his college career and then his college career is over. Like he's going to fight his butt off. I, I can tell you, I can tell you that right now. There's no doubt about it. He is not going to let this opportunity go easily. So I'm sitting here saying I have all the faith in the world. And actually, I mean, I, I really do feel very, very confident heading to Wake Forest. But uh, Greg, Ken's any additional thoughts here on that, on that piece? I'm going to give it to Ken's first. Go, go for it. I mean, I, this whole season, our guys have, uh, overcome adversity. I mean, that's just been what's happened this season. It's unfortunate. And I wish that one season they didn't have to go through that, but 
back to back years it's been like that but they've overcome it overcame it the way that they need to um they've gotten stronger they've you can see that the team bonding is better i mm-hmm. believe that they're going to go into wake and play the exact same way that they did against Miami and Clemson i mean the defense will probably show out it's, i feel like this is just making the team closer more mm-hmm. than anything um are we saying what we think about the situation yet or no? Actually, let's work to that. I think, I think, yeah, I okay. think, uh, cool. so, so for me, my first thoughts, and, and I think we're all going to be all over the place tonight because there's so many ways to unpack this and we want to, you know, do it in a mindful and, and in a smart manner. But I think that, um, we've won these last two games, not, not, because of the quarterback and not – let me try to make sure I say it the right way. It, it wasn't anything that the quarterback did that was, like, over-the-top spectacular, right? Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't call the quarterback game managing, but the stats bear a lot of this, of this out, right? And I think after that, that – uh, probably that coming-to-Jesus talk that the team had after Duke, mm-hmm. um, you know, you saw that they – that they took that bye week, which was, you know, looking back was probably at the best time possible because this this thing was coming off the rails really quick. But um, they went in, saw what was working, saw what wasn't working, probably simplified the playbook. Um, they probably, you know, figured it out. Hey, you know, who are our best playmakers to rely on? Because you had seen it to that point. The wide receiver rotation was starting to shrink, and you've seen mm-hmm. now – that we are in a rhythm there where you probably have about five guys that are, will rotate in and out now consistently instead of eight, yeah. nine, 10 that we saw at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Uh, our defense has uh, shored up what was plaguing it earlier. Right. And when the team did have mistakes, we were over, able to overcome because of our defense. Right. We talked about it last night on the live stream, the two turnovers we had uh, against Miami, the defense came right back and got the ball right back. Um, one of those was, you know, deep, in state's territory and that was the Aiden white interception and then um then uh i think it was a uh another interception after the uh um morris interception so yeah. I, I i think you know and i'm getting a little, little long a little long-winded and we'll talk about it more we have mm-hmm. to remember that mj's only played nine games right mm-hmm. and that's a very small sample size and out of those nine games eight were at home and you know, with the exception of the three games this year against Miami, Clemson, and, and Duke to a little bit lesser extent, he hadn't really played quality defenses, right? And his one road game, we we took a we took a bad L. Yeah. So, um, anyway, those are just my initial thoughts, and we can start unpacking some of that. Yeah, let's get some of these comments here. So, uh, Nick uh, coming in here saying, "I know today was crazy, but I hope still everyone had a great day." Appreciate that, Nick. Definitely need more of that. Uh, Hunter coming in saying, uh, wow, my emotions all are all over the place. And there's definitely no doubt this afternoon it was uh, it was tough to be focused, because especially because my phone and I think everybody's phones were just going off the hook crazy. And uh, mm-hmm. and 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 I get it. Um, and Nick saying it could be worse. MJ could be light blue shirting. And that's 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 very that's 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 true. <laughs> that's, that's a way to look at it. Um, and, uh, you know, Colby talking about everyone is overreacting. And, and listen, I. I I'll just say immediately that, you know, f- that I get reminded about this a lot. Fans is short for fanatic. So, and there's a part of me that understands the, the, the huge emotion just because so many fans really did put a lot of their eggs in the MJ basket. I mean, again, like, you know, the, the chance for MJ Morris, you know, the, the people putting the posters, you know, or, 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 around NC state university's campus and be like, where's MJ Morris? Like, you know, we've been begging for MJ. And, and so now to hear that, you know, he's sitting the rest of the season, it's like, you know, it, it's, it sucks for sure. So, uh, so I get it. Uh, but now again, like, just like we said, personal shots is, is over respecting the, line the sure. kids family. Like, yeah. This tweet right here, that wasn't what she said we are to. It was more of a disrespectful comment towards the tweet that involved MJ. Mm, and yeah. it said that she Whoa. he hopes the family's happy with the decision they made. Yeah, that's a Twitter. And, that's a, that's a that was a Twitter troll too, which was made it even yeah, worse. The decision like, was yeah. never mentioned in the tweet. So there's no the aunt never 
said anything is true. Nothing came out. She just said we are. I mean, supporting your kid. I mean, supporting your nephew, son, everything. You're going to do that. Family's going to do that. Um, the personal attacks are insane. And I just hope that MJ and his family realize and remember that the supportive and real fans 99%. of Wolfpack Nation would way outnumber the trolls that hide behind a profile picture and a keyboard. Sure. Well, and, 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 and keeping and keeping in mind once again, just like I said, that that if they do see like some of these strong reactions, just like I said, come from the fact that again, I mean, hearts broken. You know what I mean? I mean, they they really a lot of fans I, I know, especially put a lot of again their eggs and really wanting to see MJ and MJ be that guy. Now again, I'm not talking about the guys you know calling the guy names, but you know the guys who are you know upset, you know. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of backing up some of those some of those guys because again it, it's it's definitely been a different situation in the fact that there's been a, 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 a I've never seen a season where there was a, a, a as big of a push for a, a guy for to it, be yeah. a starting quarterback than this season with MJ I mean, Morris. So I feel like everybody's bummed. Obviously, oh, everybody's, yeah. everybody's hurt. Everybody's upset. Everybody's shocked. Mm -hmm. Like we yeah. thought we talked about it yesterday, but not really. Like honestly, me speaking for me, I didn't expect it to actually happen but um not i feel like a lot of fans are going back to like even this season with jordan houston jordan houston came out and said he's redshirting and leaving he said it himself right mm -hmm. and all that no, was put out, no ambiguity yeah all that was put out is red shirt so right i'm the type of person that i believe somebody until they give me a reason not to and mm -hmm. saying that the conversations i had with mj himself today i'm choosing to believe that it is just a red shirt do i hope that that's true yes do i hope that it stays that way yes um but mj's never given me a reason not to trust him so i'm gonna believe what he says over the rumors right now yeah so i mean let's i think we need to start kind of unpacking some of this i keep using that word unpacking because i think there's multiple layers to this and, and multiple angles that we can look at this from um going to ken's point it it you know, the, the assumption was all year long that he was going to redshirt, right? I felt like, you know, that's one of the reasons why you bring in uh, a graduate uh, in Brendan Armstrong to get MJ back that redshirt that he lost having to play five games the last year due to all the injuries. Mm -hmm. So we we pretty much – that was the assumption, right? And then and then you – then the offense is struggling. And, and, and we've come to the conclusion that it, this wasn't all on Brandon Armstrong, the problems that we had, right? It's well documented that we've had problems on the offensive line. That's been a work in progress. They've done multiple things, whether, you know, th because of injury, because of, you know, just poor performance. They mm -hmm. shake that up a couple of times. Then you see it on the, on the wide receiver front, too. You see that, you know, being shook and shaken up multiple times throughout the year. So – we needed a shot in the arm, right? You know, after that Louisville game, you know, we 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 had a chance to go up seventeen nothing. You know, here's the thing: we go up seventeen nothing that game. We probably end up winning that game. We may or may not even see MJ Morris, right? In the in the mm -hmm. in the red shirt stays intact, and mm -hmm. he never has to come and play the game. Mm -hmm. So, so he comes in, you know, um, does really well against Marshall, and then we go on the road and get. Like you said, curb stomp, right? Is that what you say? Or donkey stomp? Yep. What is your what is your term? Donkey stomp, yeah. 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 So we yeah. go get donkey stomp there, and then that's when the, the team has to rally with one another. And mm -hmm. you know, it we come out and you win, you know, three of the next four again with the Marshall and the, the Miami and Clemson. And now we're at the crossroads. Does he does he red shirt? Does he not red shirt? Now here's where it gets kind of muddy because here's the other thing we have to remember. No one from NC State has really come out and said anything other than he's red shirt. Exactly. And I think that's why fans are having such an issue is because MJ or none of the coach staff have said anything at all. So it, right. it's just all just just it, it leads it all to speculation. That's that's, that's yeah, I'm, I'm looking thinking. I'm looking forward to that Dave's presser on Thursday. I feel well, like that's when everything will be unpacked at least. Yeah. And, and it makes sense why no one wanted this to come out so soon, right? Because you are game planning for Wake Forest, and you don't exactly. want them – you want to make their life a little bit harder, right? Yeah. Um, again, we saw that last year with Devin Leary. We thought Devin Leary was going to be playing in that Syracuse game. Word comes out like two or three hours before kickoff. Leary's done for the season. We're like, everybody's like, what, what, what? So yeah. this really isn't new territory from, you know, that it's whole It's like a situation. complete copy and paste. Oh, it's deja vu school. all over again. <laughs> but <laughs> with something with state fans need to know, you're in athletes, if you're watching, you're not going to have a secret with Wolfpack Nation. It's it's going <laughs> to well, get out. It's going to get out before you want it to. So just, just be ready well, for that. 
Well, and especially again, like, you know, with, with, with a, you know, shocker alert, it wasn't the day of the game that, that Dave Doran found out that Devin Leary was out for the season. He knew that well in right. advance. And I right. guarantee you with this MJ Morris, he knew well in advance. It wasn't like he found out today that MJ Morris is registering. He found out ahead of time, but yet he still put MJ Morris as the starting quarterback against Wake Forest. So, right. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So, so again, you know, so now here we are with all of this rampant speculation you know, and to Ken's point, maybe he is just redshirting and he'll be back next year. But it just seems weird that, you know, unless this was a team decision or a team and MJ decision, like a mutual decision, I don't know how you come back next year. If this was an MJ slash MJ family decision and they went to the coaching staff and said, look, our, our dude's done for the year. Like, I'm sorry. I If that is the case, I'm not so sure he comes back. But if it's one of the first two scenarios that I just mentioned, I think it's a little bit different, right? I think, you know, it's a mutual, like the team wants the red shirt because, again, we we all thought that was the original plan to begin with the season. Well, and, 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 well, and Kenz, let me say this one thing because I know that, you know, I know that, again, you're, you know, you're friends with NJ. So let me kind of say this kind of from a not friends with, you know, MJ perspective, if, just to kind of help lead into it. Um, you know, like, I think that this is why, coach Doran or MJ saying something is really, really important is because of the fact, I think that there's two scenarios, either a, the coaching staff had a conversation with MJ Morrison team mm-hmm. and said, we think that there is not a significant enough increase between MJ and Brennan that we're going to choose to, we're going to choose to redshirt MJ and let Brennan have an opportunity to finish off season or two, which is that during the Miami game, he suffered an injury, began rib injury, wherever that may be. And he needs to, we need to sit him for the season for the sake of his long term career. Uh, like we need to hear one of those two things. If we don't hear that, then that all the speculation and everything you know, back on the table. About his family yeah. is on the table. And so that, that that's why to me something needs to come. Uh, it, of it, so. And to your first point, Layton, the stats bear all of that out. What you just said, right? Absolutely. The stats does. are very very similar. Um, like only thing that's really different is the rushing yards. Um, and, and that's where, where so, to your point earlier, that's where BA gets the edge. Um, and, and that he can, he can make plays out of broken plays where MJ just either isn't recognizing that, or he just doesn't have the speed to, to, to get out of it because you'll see he'll, he'll break out, you know, when the play breaks down, but it seems to be like a step or, you know, a second too step slow two behind. Yeah. yeah. And he'll get caught. Right. And it'll only be a yeah. one or two yard gain, which again, bears out to his average. I think is like 1.8 yards per run. So yeah, it, it all yeah. makes, makes sense. I yeah. just can't go ahead. Yeah. I feel like it's, I mean, there are a lot of things that can cause somebody to redshirt, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like I never, I didn't even take in consideration today until I was told that, I mean, he's visited the tent four times in the past two games. And this last one against Miami, that rib injury, I mean, that I didn't think he was going back in the game. So it, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. haven't heard anything about that, but it could very much be a, hey, I don't want to risk getting hurt and having to eventually even get hit and get out of the game. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm out. But um, I think the reason that or people are speculating and all going to the negative is because Dave hasn't said anything. I mean, you know that our entire football program has seen what's going on on Twitter. It's not like they've been they've exactly. hid from it or anything. They know what's going on and they have they should be out there stopping it or saying whatever they need to do and I feel like that's why everybody is looking at the negative outcome of what is happening. And it was short. interesting because there was players that met with the media today and and nothing was even you know, but they were very short. Like Tim McKay yeah, moved there for like two minutes, and yeah. and whoever was but was Brandon like Cleveland. Yeah. Shout out to Brandon Cleveland. Brandon Cleveland. Shout out to Brandon Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, <laughs> no, he 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 was he was bringing some laughs today on social media, and I love it. And and I I really do hope it was on purpose. I really do hope that he was like, too. all right, let let me let me kind of bring in you know a little clip <laughs> of me doing the you down and splitting it. Like I'm like, yeah, good for you, Brandon. Like that's what's up. <laughs> Or he has no idea what's going on and just wanted to. Well, no, I mean, for those that don't know, he was recruited by Miami. He committed to Miami, and then he decommitted and came to us because they basically just lost interest in him because they decided they they, they shifted around their coaching staff and made others priorities. So, um, you know, he was enjoying the whole, you know, beat the beatdown of Miami over the weekend. 
Yeah. So to answer, so to real, I think we've kind of basically been answered, you know, kind of discussing this question of do y'all think he transfers from band shoes here? And the one thing which I'll add as kind of food for thought, this isn't like, like speculation, but it's just a thought, which is that if there really was an issue injury wise with MJ Morris, my thing is, was like, I, I'd understand if like MJ was balling out, for example, and he got hit and it's like, all right, we need you to push through this MJ, just push through it, get us this win. And, you know, and then, and then we'll deal with it afterwards. But he wasn't necessarily balling out. Like, you know, he was struggling again. I think it was 11 for 21 had uh, a touchdown interception, but that, you know, that one touchdown was, you know, just like a boop, it's Jordan pool. And I would, I would, it was a layup. I, I would more give that touchdown to the play call really than necessarily. MJ, not not saying MJ didn't have anything to do with it, but just saying that play call was gorgeous, uh, yep. to say the least. Um, so I'm just saying, like, like if MJ was really that hurt, why would we not have, you know, said, all right, Brennan, like, you know, tr- you know, go pull us through, man. Like, if he really was that hurt to the point where we would talk about redshirting him for the rest of the season. But again, just just complete kind of thinking it through here. But again. It all comes down to we really do need to hear something. I think all of Wolfpack Nation really needs to hear something from Coach Dorn or MJ about this matter um, once and for all. Because, again, like we've heard about, you know, his dad going on WRAL saying he's not leaving the program, things like that, which, you know, again, I I don't really care to hear it from his parents. I want to hear it from MJ. I want to hear it from Coach Dorn. I want to hear directly from the sources. Yeah, typically doesn't Dorn have a presser like either on like Wednesdays or Thursdays? I think Thursday. Is it Thursday? Thursday. I thought so. Yeah, so. It'll be interesting to see I know how that's gonna, that's gonna be the first question. Oh, that's gonna be the first <laughs> you question. Be ready for it. Yeah. So I feel yeah. like that's exactly what they're waiting on. I feel like I mean, yeah. our team, our coaches have never been ones to just come out the day of. Like even with Devin Leary, no, they didn't come out and say anything. It was we found out and then saw it during the game. So I mean, they've never been one to let us know. I feel mm-hmm. like that's just something we're gonna have to wait on. And I feel like even on Thursday, it's gonna be a very nonchalant answer so we'll see we're just going we'll to see, see. What happens. yeah it'll be interesting yeah. to see if he comes out with a prepared statement or if he just takes it as a question right yeah and um i don't know but as far as uh you know this can be spun a bunch of different ways uh you know it with, with you with regards to mj's dad coming out and saying he's not leaving and then i know ken's he he t- you talked to him and he said he wasn't leaving and you, you, at this point I, I think they truly want to have all options on the table, whether that's returning back to state, whether that's going in the transfer portal. Um, I think I think they want to make sure that they can leverage everything they can possibly leverage, and they want to come out looking like the the, the, the good guy. Uh, and so you don't want to burn bridges here necessarily, because what if quote unquote that offer that that magical unicorn offer doesn't come right? You 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 think you don't want to overplay your hand or oversell your hand, so. He 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 wants to make sure that he has that fallback option, if you will. And I think, mm-hmm. unfortunately, I think at this point, state is his fallback option. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to go ahead and get to some more comments here. As we definitely have a lot of them, uh, you know, here, which is awesome. So thank you all so much for sending in your comments here. Um, Joseph uh, Wimmer coming in here. And don't get me wrong, I love MJ. He was in my business class last year, but I'm not entirely sold that he solved any of our offensive problems. I feel like the play calling got way better in the past three games. And uh, uh, yeah. I I I hundred percent agree. I think that that it was more of the play calling change that really kind of helped you see what you saw against Miami, which was those couple of drives, which were like, dang, like that's that where, where has that been? I think it would really was changing the whole offensive philosophy from trying to find all these guys to be like, all right, you know what? I found these guys, DJ Collins, again, Trent Penix, Kevin Concepcion. I'm gonna get these guys involved. Simple as that. So real quick, can I throw some stats out there just kind of you know, Go for make, it. make it make sense. So in the two years, he's got a 57.8 percentage. Granted, he's only thrown 199 passes in his time here at state at nine games, right? He's actually down in almost every category with the exception of touchdowns. Um, it, but his completion percentage is down. His, his average is down. Um, he threw the same amount of touchdowns. Remember he played five games last year and only played four this year. So he he's, he's got uh, five interceptions just sort of compared to one. So he's regressed in that manner. And again, not everything's always going to be on him, but you know, these are just stats, three more sacks than last year, same amount of touchdowns and only about 60 yards more again, playing one last game. So 
you, you know, food for, food it, for it, thought. It, it, just food for thought. I mean, yeah, and the stats are going to paint whatever picture you want them to paint. Like I can, I can paint that narrative in a positive or negative way, right? Depending on how I want to spend my story. Yeah. But it's just, it is a piece of the story. And and we talked about the 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 Brennan Armstrong numbers, and I'm, I'm, I'll find them here in a second. But if I gave you both sets of numbers, I'm not so sure you could tell me which quarterback was which, right? Because they're 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 so close in 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 in, in comparison. And so that would then, you know, could align with the, well, why not redshirt them, right? Because we already know that BA will give you just as much, if not maybe slightly more than what he's doing, and you can yep. keep his red shirt. So this yep. story can still stay anyway. Yep, agreed. Um, I love the devil advocates kind of saying, man, sign to deal with Dave. I'll get you your bowl <laughs> eligibility and I'll keep my eligibility, <laughs> which is <laughs> an interesting way to put it you know again i mean obviously that's that's a more of a joke than anything but you know it, it is interesting I mean, how you know he got to the bowl eligibility and then i still know, feel but, like these three games are completely winnable um honestly. oh a million percent. Like, i don't think i still have the same amount of faith that i did right after the miami game i still think we could have went i went out and then win our bowl game still get i mean what if we got to that 10 win season after all this well, well here's something to think about too even with so this will tell you what Vegas thinks about our quarterback situation. The line didn't move in either direction after after the announcement the red shirt was being made. Yep. So that tells you, you know, one and one A, right? They're basically, you know, one A, one B, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, point. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah. So and Good isn't point. our so. to answer Russell, isn't our backup Lex? No. I mean, well, it depends on how you want to look at it because when when that VMI game they brought in the other guy. I don't even oh, know his yeah. name. Rose is it Rhodes? Again, I, I think okay. that Dorn, again, let's put it this way. I don't think the coach staff necessarily prepared saying we played four quarterbacks last year. There's no way we're going to have to need our third string quarterback, right? <laughs> like, like, there's no way, right? With so, NC State, yeah. you always have to, there's no, I would hope we won't so, need right? this, right? Well, and because that's yes, my other, is real. well, because that's my other question, which is kind of an interesting thing about MJ sitting out is that we're going to find out real soon, unfortunately. If the situation where Brandon Armstrong goes down, if MJ is a part of the team and Brandon Armstrong goes down, if MJ Morris doesn't come into the game, then you're going to find out your answer right there. And again, I'm 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 just I'm just saying that is a situation that if if MJ is decided to still be a part of the team, if Brandon Armstrong goes down, if MJ doesn't go back in, well, I'll take you one more. If he's not even dressed, that 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 question's already answered for you, right? right? Yeah. But but because again the unfortunate situation is that okay the difference between MJ and Brandon right now is is minute but the difference between Brennan MJ and again not not hating on Lex Thomas but I would more likely assume that the goal that we hit with MJ last year as a true freshman I mean Thayer Thomas said that that watch out but <laughs> I don't I know love it. I always I believe I Thayer you know? I will always believe Thayer I believe Thayer but I'm just like uh I don't know man I, just... I don't know. I just these guys. I feel like it's going to be a huge distraction, and I'm hoping that they get don't or zone out of that this week. I hope that they can continue yeah. to ball out. I just that's what I'm. That's where my heart is right now. Is I feel bad for those guys. I don't yeah. think that they saw it coming, just like we didn't. So I'm just hoping that they can get that distraction out of their heads and just head into this week and just focus on Wake. He, yeah. And he was supposedly – he did practice with the team today, but I don't know if that was before announcement or after announcement. I don't really know the timeline on that. Um, but yeah, like I said, we'll know we'll know if he's even dressed in Winston-Salem or if he even makes the trip, what kind of the future may hold, if, the, if that makes, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's Hunter brings up the point saying, if he does plan to leave, this is – a, you know, a possibly good thing for the program, as hard as that is to say, more because now you know, and so now the coach staff can go ahead and start the game plan in terms of transfer portal wise. Because I mean, there's already guys in the transfer portal that you can go and look at. So now, you know, finding a guy to compete against MJ is much more different than actually finding a guy that more than likely is going to be our starting quarterback for next season. More than likely, unless I mean, unless Cedric Bailey or Lex Thomas absolutely balls out, which I would assume is yeah. you know very unlikely. So. Yeah, um, I doubt. I doubt Cedric Bailey comes in and, and and becomes the starter right away. Um, I, I mean, unless you know, again, if he just comes in and starts blowing people's minds, he's having obviously. a great season. But he is. Know. But I mean, that's a big <laughs> jump, and he yeah. he needs to eat a few sandwiches. He's a he's a pretty thin guy. But yeah. uh, you know, different different mindset when you get to college ball. Um, I think you would hope that Lex can at least probably come come in and compete next year because 
he will have used his red shirt. So you want to try to maybe get something out of him, you know, in a year that will count. Um, again, I don't know what, what that is. Um, I, I think he was always viewed as a, as a project, um, probably a two year project, maybe even a three year project. So I don't know. You're definitely, you're definitely going to bring in a portal guy and, 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 in today's age, you're going to probably much bring a portal guy in every year, right? Whether that's as a backup or or someone like in the last year, we brought a portal guy in and Jack Chambers and his role was to be the backup, right? He was, you know, he was okay with that role. Um, I feel every year you're going to bring a portal guy in, whether or not he competes, that will be depending on, you know, the, the, the stature and what your quarterback room currently looks like. Um, but I think that's just the way it is. There's just not enough footballs to go around for the quarterback position. And that's going to be a, an ever revolving position in the portal. Yeah. And to answer OMG weather, no, Jordan, when he announced he was redshirting, he left yeah. the program immediately. So yeah. he's been gone since that day. Yeah. yeah. Jason, um, Jason's comment is so relatable. <laughs> go ahead. Which one? No. I'm so sad with this news. NC State has so much PTSD due to abandonment. That word abandonment is just amazing for me. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's like post-traumatic yeah. state depression. It is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Post-traumatic state depression. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, yeah, and, and and I know there's some comments y'all talking about some of the things that happened on Twitter today. I like this one. This is a good one. This is a good one. This is from our guy. Still time for Wishbone Peyton Wilson. There's still some time for Wishbone Peyton Wilson at QB. I love it. Let's do it. I, I mean, like why not? Do it. I mean, oh, what totally. can you do, honestly? <laughs> Oh, totally. I mean, just, no doubt. just throw Peyton back there and run the Wildcat three downs and see what happens. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, no. But again, I have to give Brandon his props up, man. That guy's a bulldog when he runs the ball, man. Like, you know, he has no issues with, with lowering that shoulder. So so I have no issues. He can put this uh, uh, grit into every single run that Peyton Wilson would be absolutely proud of. So, yeah. Um, I, 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 speaking jokes. of Peyton, I would, I would definitely be curious as to, as to his thoughts on this whole situation being one of That's the That's what captain. I was thinking about earlier. Peyton you know, is a very – dedicated and passionate guy so yeah, his, I, would, I would have paid to see his reaction to the news honestly but um okay. i mean i feel like it would be poetic justice if brennan is the one to end the curse at wake and be the hero coming out of saturday because very it true if we very end that true. curse he's going to be the hero coming out we haven't won there in like 20 years I, so, that's what it seems like. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, honestly, I'm just I'm glad in a weird way that this is all breaking after a win against Miami and not a loss. Um, you know, not that I want to think of a potential loss against Wake Forest. I, I I just want I just want to win just for the fan base so we can just keep moving on in a positive direction because if we were to lose against oh Wake, God, the blame. It, it's it's just going to be gross. I, I mean, I'm just going to say that right now. It, it will be gross. But, you know, we, you know, I, I have full faith. This, this, this offense has evolved, you know, and we've said it and we'll say it again since that Duke game and they've simplified it. They've gotten to, they found out what's worked for them and that they've done enough wrinkles in the offense to where it's keeping defenses just enough at bay to be successful. Yeah. And I mean, going uh, into this game, Wake's not going to know how to prepare. Honestly, like they're not going to not because Brennan's not probably not going to be doing the same offensive drives and stuff that he did before MJ took over. So it's going to no. be it's going to be a hard thing for them to coach on defense. It's it's very different. Yeah. It's very very different. So yeah, yeah. and yeah, it gets, this again, offense and, looks completely different. And yeah, keeping not, and keeping in mind with the defenses that Brennan's going to face the rest of the season in terms of regular season, we don't know necessarily what the bowl game's going to have. More likely, he will not have to score 42 points to win a yeah. football game. Like, I mean, like, with how our defense is playing right now, if they can continue playing like this, I mean, we're not asking him to go out there and be Superman to win these games for us. Just right. do his do his job, do his thing, make some make a few plays, and we should be fine. So I, I still um, argue 24 is the magic number. If we get to 24, yeah. I like our chances in all yeah. these games. I feel like our defense Agreed. can – completely take or take over from that aspect if we yeah. can just score 24. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So like to your point, Layton, you know, th as far as the defense is, we're, we're favored in this game. We probably be, will be either favored or it'll be probably a pick them uh, at, at tech. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on where UNC is at with their season, by the time we roll to them, mm -hmm. we might be a slight underdog in that game. That's the only one I can maybe see us being an underdog in at this point, moving forward. Like you said, other than the bowl game, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, again, but I mean, who knows if if the, if Brennan comes in here and starts lighting it up, maybe that's not even a you know we're not favored in that game. You, you know, with it being a home game and hopefully maybe a night game. And 
But again, we just got to take them one time, one game at a time. I think we've got, we're, we think we're in a great shape. I, 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 I'm glad that this has happened now and, and not after the Duke game because, and, yeah. And, Go ahead. And, and keeping and keeping in mind that you know people saying you know because I know Greg you said Brennan might come light up you, and people might say no he's not going to light up like did you see him before MJ Morris I'm saying once again y'all that I truly do say that a lot of the issues with Brennan Armstrong could have come from the fact that we were figuring out a lot of other things besides yeah. Brennan Armstrong and you're adding yeah. in that unknown of Brennan Armstrong along with it it's 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 basically just like like a like putting a bunch of spice together and just hoping for the best like you know it, it's it's but now we have an offensive line that as far as we know is healthy that is going to be the same five for now three straight games in a row uh you have you know a a set amount of playmakers that are involved on a routine basis so brennan knows what he's going to get Anai knows what he's going to get from the guys and Anai knows Brennan better than any of us. So, so that's why I feel confident that we saw what he can do talent wise for 2021. And I'm not going to sit here and say from here on out, we are seeing 2021 brain on strong, but I am saying no. I very much expect, I, I, I very much can see somewhere right there in the middle in terms of being an effective quarterback that can put points on the board. So, but well, again, we'll see. And, and, uh, but the one thing which I want to move, uh, Hunter brings up a, a point talking about our recruiting class uh, in terms of how is this going to affect current recruits. And again, for for me and, and you know, and, and Ken's, you know, Greg, maybe you you guys might know some things. But at the end of the day, I, I'm sitting here saying between what I've, you know, what you've seen from Jonathan Paler, what we, you know, we just interviewed Gus Ritchie. That uh, interview is coming out tomorrow morning. Oh, I have no uh, worries in Gus. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, no, exactly. I have, no, no worries. He's Twenty-five going. anyway, but yeah. yeah well, exactly. Done. But but what, but I mean, what I'm saying is like, listen, like I've seen enough from these guys that they really do buy in on the coaching staff. They buy in on the culture. They're not. They're they're not. They're not coming here be, because of solely, MJ. Solely, yeah, solely because because of MJ. Um, and so 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 that that's the biggest, biggest reason why I'm saying, hey, listen, like if there is a recruit that is rolled off because of MJ. Uh, okay. I mean, like I, I, you know, I, I, I can't necessarily say I get it, but you know, okay. It is what it is. But I, I, I truly do believe that Doran and staff really do revolve on the family atmosphere and the potential. Cause I'm sitting here saying as well, like people were saying this was going to be a, a rebuilding year, which in retrospect, you know, it probably will be, but we just beat Miami and Clemson y'all. Like, like, I mean, I'm just yeah. saying like, we're, and bowl, we, we're bowl eligible. I mean, we're bowl eligible. Would, and, and after the, that Duke game, I feel like nobody would have expected us to, or, eventually right. or think about going the rest of the way, winning out. Like no one right. would have ever guessed that. So, yeah. yeah. So again, it, it's not like, it's not like our future is reliant around MJ. Let's put it that way. So, so again, we, we don't know. And again, there's a lot of talks with Terrell Anderson, with Georgia, you know, but then they, I'm sitting here saying it's talk, you know, it, it's so not sure, but I, I feel very, very confident with those main pieces we have, Jonathan Paler, Gus Ritchie, you name it, uh, Cedric Bailey, that it, these guys are, are bought into the program, yeah. bought into coach Doran and yeah. that's it. The, w- the one thing I'll say, we've got, you know, Duke Johnson coming in next year, a uh, good, good solid running back. There's been a lot of good positive talk about the four star, um, Michigan State, former Michigan State recruit. Uh, we've had some nice visits from some offensive linemen here recently. So the momentum is still, I think, still really good. And, and here's the thing. You know what You know what fixes a lot of this? If we go out and win the next two to three ball games, if you go in and finish the season oh, wow. strong, that is the best way to keep momentum in your recruiting. Um, you know, you, you can mask a lot of things by winning, and, and you can mask a lot of – of the maybe drama that's hiding behind the scenes w- when there's winning. Um, people seem to be in a lot better mood when you're winning, <laughs> right? Every, everyone wants to be part of a winner. Uh, so, so if, if, if you, if you're worried about recruits, just go out and win ball games. I, the coaching staff Absolutely. is is doing their thing. They're hitting the, they're hitting it hard. They're, they're maintaining their relationships. None of that changes, but um, I wanted to jump into this comment right here. Cause I think this is, this is a valid one right here. Um, he goes, uh, Jason Santiago goes, I don't see a world where MJ comes back. How do you get a locker room behind you next year after abandoning them when everything was still on the line at the peak of the team's momentum? Um, so, so Leighton, you want to take that one first? Because I have thoughts on this. 
Yeah. So how do you get a team behind you? Um, so I understand. See, here, here's my thought. Here's my thought on it. All right. And, and this is no knack against MJ, but here's a, here's a, an issue I have. Let's put it that way. Is that assuming that we don't hear anything from Doran in terms of that, it was either a coaching decision or an injury decision, AKA basically alluding at it was a MJ decision. I'm out. Yeah. Then, then, then here's my thing. From a competitor perspective, I have an issue with somebody again, I, I'm, Business decisions or not, I have an issue with, especially since we are again good or bad. Either way, if, if we were if we were eight no or zero and eight, I have an issue with somebody saying I'm I'm going to take myself out of the fight. Now, again, he may have his reasons, but business wise or transfer wise, I still am not sitting here saying unless it was a coaching decision saying for the benefit of the team. Or an injury position, which is I'm going to put myself in bodily harm if I do this, then I understand those. But if it's a, well, I want to, I I have a redshirt I can use, I'm going to use it so that way just just so I can. Or I'm thinking about going elsewhere and so I want to be able to see what there is. I I can't, I can't, I can't get behind that, you know, and and, and so, so I, again, it goes back to, I need to know more. Uh, yeah, and that's what I'm. I feel I need like to know more. I feel like you yep. can't think about that this comment until word comes out as to why yep. the red shirt was chosen. Honestly, well, yep. and again, if 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 Dorn does come out and say, "Hey, listen, we moved forward so with Brennan because decision. it was a coaching yeah. decision," great. If it was MJ was injured and for the sake of his long term, you know, career, we decided to red shirt him. Okay, great. Because but, that yeah. then you don't need to get an entire locker room behind you. I mean, the whole, right, whole right. team's going to understand. Hey, this is coach. I mean, we're going to yeah. still back him. So depends yeah. on what the answer to what that speculation is before yeah. we know the answer to this question. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I was going to give my answer both ways too. If, if this was a coaching's decision or like we said earlier, a mutual decision between player and coach, mm-hmm. um, I have no problems with him coming back next year and fighting for his job because mm-hmm. again, you're going to, Hey, here's the funny thing. We, we just said a few minutes ago, He's going to have to fight for this job. We, he's only played nine games. He hasn't shown enough to where I'm just going to hand you the keys to the kingdom and go, have at it, buddy. Good luck. <laughs> Definitely. Um, because, again, you still only have Lex Thomas, who's a rising. You have Ethan Rose that we talked about. You still need another quarterback to come in. Now, again, those are decisions and coaches' conversations that we'll never be privy to. All right, so that's number one. If he has chosen to – pull himself out of out of competition i don't see how if i were a player in that locker room i would have he would have to regain my trust um i'm not just going to be mm-hmm. like welcome back buddy let's go get him um mm-hmm. no. I, I i i don't like the argument that he feels like he need, just needs to have that red shirt because and, and i'll and i'll explain real quick he still has two years of eligibility remaining right that's and what if he gets of, injured one year what if he well, gets into one year and he has to use it? Re- right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry. But, sorry. Go ahead. But no, it's okay. You you have two years to go improve yourself to NFL scouts. That's plenty of right. time. Um, I, I talked in the Discord today, by the way, if you're not a member of it, we've had a lot of great conversations. So uh, <laughs> we'll plug that real quick. But yeah. there's been in recent years where five quarterbacks in the college college ball have played one year as a starter and got, got drafted in the first round. You have – um, Cam Newton, you had Dwayne Haskins, you had um, um, uh, Kyler Murray, um, M- uh, Sanchez, mm-hmm. and then there was one more. I can't remember the the other one, um, but it's not unprecedented. So you still have time to get noticed, right? So if you did it that way, I just can't welcome you back with open arms. I'm sorry. Yeah, but again, it did, and again, Ken's like we're we're and and, and everybody, we're not saying <laughs> you know, that, that is what's happening. Me. Well, I'm again, just, I'm upset too. Uh, yeah, no, no. Well, and again, I'm I'm because again, I, I'm just I, believing I, my boy. Come on, I, MJ. I hear you. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. And, it's us against the world right now, MJ. And again, I I, I honestly hope and pray that it was a coaching decision saying. Yeah. We did not see that much of a difference because again, I don't. I'd rather him. I'd rather the option where he's not injured. So, uh, but you know, 
it, it, it is a possibility. And so we definitely, and again, like, you know, people are, you know, in here talking about, again, things that happened on Twitter, you know, with his family, things like that, which I, one thing I'll go ahead and say is being that, you know, again, thinking about these, you know, student athletes, I'm sure that we, they do, they would not appreciate us coming on a live stream and talking about the behavior of their family members, good or bad, whatever it may be. Um, just like I, I don't necessarily want to sit here and call out any specific Wolfpack fans or whatever it may be. We're right. just talking generally wise. What happened today? A lot of it was way over the top. Um, yep. So we'll just leave it at that. So, you know, yep. for, you know, Mac and some other guys talking about, you know, his mom or whatever it may be in terms of what they said against coaches. You know, listen, it, 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 it's at the, end, at the end of the day, I guarantee you that the coaches are, you know, they, they, they're, they're on their own. Like, you know, they, there's they, a, yeah, there's a lot of fault to be fault to be thrown around here by fans, sure. by some of the family. Um, now I, like I, I understand the family that. because they're going to, they're going to stick up for their, for their, for their family member. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's always family first in, in my house. So I, I totally get that, but there's, a probably a way that people could better talk to one another. Um, and, and sometimes words don't come across when you're reading them, you know, people read into things more, but anyway, I wanted to talk about this comment because I think this is a, a valid question here um, by OMG weather. So MJ seemed to be hitting Casey and him making the plays happen while Brennan has completed more downfield passes than MJ. Is it just me? Is it just me, or does it feel like BA struggles to hit open guys? So the numbers will tell you, and again, you can whatever you want to take with numbers. Um, I believe Brennan was eight of thirty-one on deep throws, and I believe MJ was one of eighteen um, from over one twenty of the stats. yards. Yeah, over twenty mm-hmm. yards. Mm-hmm. So again, take that for what it's what you want. I I do know that you know when you look at MJ's. Uh, Completion percentage, there were a lot of push passes in there, a lot of push mm-hmm. passes to KC, and those count as 100% completions because they are considered passes, not a handoff. Um, yep. So so that stat that I just mentioned will bear some of that out. And even with that being said, he still had a lower percentage completion than Brennan Armstrong did. Anybody else yep. want to jump in there? Well, the one thing which I will say is that also too. I think now we're again we're going to the guys that we know can be a playmaker can get separation because that's the other thing as well. I literally watched that, that Virginia game. I literally made an effort to say because again, I mean, most people on offense you watch the quarterback right and you wait for him to throw the ball or hopefully not get sacked. Uh, but I literally made effort to watch wide receivers, and there was nothing in terms of like, oh my gosh, that dude is wide open. Throw it to him, Brennan. And because that's the other thing as well. People are saying he always goes to run. And and you know, again, I, I, I just feel like that we have to I still judge. take a positive play though. Most of the time he's right. getting four to six yards. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And during the UVA game, our our O line wasn't really giving him a lot of time to fall. Yeah, they were struggling. The yeah, so I don't necessarily blame him for, still for had saying, health issues on O line and everything. So. Right. So I don't blame him for necessarily saying, all right, I'm going to make sure I sit here through three progressions. Like, yeah. you know, like, so that that's why I'm saying is that, that with anything in terms of Brennan, in terms of his ability, I feel like you have to erase everything you saw pre MJ. You have to just I, erase I it. Yeah, it's, it's not it's fair. Completely different it's offense. Basically it's a completely yeah. different offense, completely it's different offensive line. Season, honestly, completely different rotation. I mean, I'm glad that he's had, he has an away game under his belt, at least um, mm-hmm. going into these next two games. But I feel like, we, I, I saw a completely different Brendan Armstrong on Saturday than I did any before MJ. So yeah. I think that that, uh, that I think that boosted up his confidence too going into this game. So I'm excited okay. to see what he does. And and Nick uh, coming here saying it's going to be really funny when Lex Thomas <laughs> comes in to beat UNC this year. <laughs> You're still let's, beat. Him. I'm calling that I, right. Now. I mean, dude. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just. I, I think we've said it. I think we will just keep hammering it home. I just don't see that you're going to have a drop off in quarterback play. That now that I'm going to call him Brendan Armstrong 2.0, right? Because we had 1.0 before, you mm-hmm. know, he got pulled or or Louisville and and, and before. Um, he just seems like he's, he's been. Here's the other thing I'm going to say too. I feel like he's going to be rejuvenated, right? Like he's getting a second lease on life at, at the quarterback position at NC State. That <laughs> he's going to he's going to be able to write what will what wrongs he had earlier in the season. And I think I think he's just going to come out and fight, just knowing that the competitor the competitor that he is. 
Yeah. And uh, g- got to give a shout out to Josh. Love the show, guys and gal. Thank you for giving us out tonight. And and listen, like, you know, again, we didn't ha- not have any prepared content. Like, you know, we didn't necessarily say, okay, we're going to stop at this point. Like, in the end day, I mean, we have 75, obviously, NC State fans in here who are wanting to talk this uh, topic or listen about this topic. And so we have no issue therapy talking session. about it for sure. It's a, good, it's a great therapy session. Exactly, Ken's. <laughs> exactly. Um, I've needed it today. Yeah. And, and, uh, Cameron Nance coming here. Yeah, we need to hear from Dave Dorn. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it would sooner help. rather than later. I, I would hope not to have to wait until Thursday to hear from him. But, you know, if. With Dave, they will we'll have see. to wait until Thursday. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't see him. I don't see him breaking out of his normal schedule. So I I, I do think it will be probably Thursday. But we, we need to. We, it will be interesting to see tomorrow, 24 hours post all this news. If if it kind of does start to. uh to the dust if it, if it does settle uh yeah. we, we we as a country like to operate in a 24-hour news cycle so after 24 hours we sometimes lose interest in these things so i'm, I'm hoping that kind of kind of is the way at least until saturday when uh we, we get started and then there'll be really reasons to complain about all of this yeah, yeah. um and uh god i've also uh, mentioned here as well um if he did, uh, D. Rue coming here saying, if he didn't play that one snap versus Syracuse last season, this wouldn't even be happening, which is an interesting thought that technically if he didn't play that one snap against Syracuse on that basically just Hail Mary throw, then he yep. would have only had played four games and, and his retro would have stayed intact last year. So an interesting thought by D. Rue for sure. Um, you know, definitely a hindsight 2020, I think, kind of kind of deal as well. It, you know, Doran at the time was just trying to do what, you know, the just trying to win football games that season, you know, not, not just saying, all right, we're – this season's a loss. Let's go ahead and move on to right. 2023, you know? So, um, yeah, the, the, at, the, at the end of the day, the coaches are, here's the other thing I think we'll talk about is coaches are paid, paid to win ball games. Now it's, it's, it's gotten to the point where the, with the way the portal works and, and all of this, it's really hard to game plan two to three years down the line. Um, and so you go out and you play the, your, your best combination of players that can help you win ball games right now, whether that's a true freshman, whether that's a fifth or sixth year grad senior transfer, um, you just have to go out and win ball games and play ball games. Now, if, if players don't want to buy into the we first mentality or the team first mentality, and they want to be about the me and their brand, um, you can pretty much weed those guys out pretty quickly. And, and there's just not a place for them, at least not in Dave Dor- Dorn's culture. Um, he's always, He's always about the team element, and I think he's built such a great culture. And we've seen over the last, you know, two to three years, minimal transfers leaving the program because of that. Mm-hmm. I think we should make that merch. I mean, I really do. I feel like it would sell out. In the I first mean, day. we'll see what we can do. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I don't want to minimize real PTSD. I know, I know, I got some brothers and sisters in in arms nice. that have suffered from PTSD, and I don't want to make light of it. So. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good joke, but that's a, that's a serious thing out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, also too, got some people pointing out we the last one, uh, in 2015 in Winston Salem, but again, I'm, you, I'm going so for many... the first time. I'm going to break that curse. Let's go. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Man, um, it's depressing at wake. I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah. 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 I hate going to wake games at wake. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also to uh, shout to Kyle coming in here, Brennan will look nine day different on Saturday. And I has done decently good the last two weeks. And uh, again, harping on that, can't can't say enough. I know that yeah. overall, the amount of points you put on the board have not been a lot, but I would say a lot of that comes down to personnel as well. Not not hating it, uh, you know, on the guys we have, but that has to be put into account a little bit as well. Is, is that mm-hmm. you know horse wise it's not necessarily the level for us to put 40 points on the board against defenses like clemson and miami and duke right <laughs> just saying that as well um so uh um so i think you already hit on this one sorry about that um do we lose terrell anderson we already talked about that um time will tell on that and, one yeah exactly um yeah in terms of quality quarterback in the transfer portal definitely need to get that um Jason's comment. Good news. We have two undefeated basketball players. There we go. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Has the game ended yet? Has oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they okay. beat them by like 40. 
Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I thought I saw that we were up by like 38 to six at the end of the first quarter, but then we only scored five <laughs> points in the second quarter. Yeah. They actually oh, outscored us seven to five in the second quarter, but we won 84 43. So we won by 41 points. Yeah. Um, D Rip also James. bring it. Go oh, ahead. and I was going to say Isaiah, 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 Isaiah James had the best quarter in women's basketball history in the first quarter, scoring 19 points in the first quarter alone. I like it. Yeah, I like it. So, anyway, back um, to back to this. D Roop also bring up a good point as well. To, to be honest, there's no way this was a coach decision. Maybe if we had lost the last two games, but not after beating Clemson and Miami with the slim shot AC championship games don't play. Well, again, keeping in mind once again that if you really feel that Brennan can do just as good, if not even maybe slightly better than MJ rest of season and still keep on MJ's red shirt, then you still understand it, even though we are still, you know, technically in it uh, in terms of the AC conference championship game, technically. Now, again, we'd have to win out and Louisville would need to win one no, or two of win. those. No, if they win Thursday yeah, night, they have to lose both. Over. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so just, uh, yeah. So, so I get it, but that's, that's not necessarily what we have going on here. Um, but uh, so, so Greg, and the other thing, which I want to mention as well is, you know, some people I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, upset from a NIL perspective being because this is kind of another thing as well, which I get is that but with NIL, we're asking fans to basically buy into uh, NIL collectives where the money goes towards these student athletes. And so another reason as well, which I really want Dorn and specifically MJ say something is not necessarily because I say that MJ owes it to the fans, but I mean, Everybody saw the eighty thousand dollar truck that MJ has, and uh, probably other NIL things as well. So I mean, he's getting good money, and so I feel like that if 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 I'm a fan, I'm putting money towards these athletes. I do feel like that there is a little bit more expectation of communication, like you know, like you know, in terms of let me know like what is going on because obviously if if I'm an NIL guy and now I'm hearing that you know like against complete speculation, but let's say MJ just decided to sit the rest of the year and then transfer at the end of the year. Well, now I'm mad because I'm saying, well, this guy was getting NIL deals on my dime while he was talking about while, while he goes and transfers to another team. Now, again, complete speculation. That's or not or speculation. But, he quit right during or, or the season. He quit. And, right. and then, and then now it's like, well, I gave all this money for this guy to quit on me. Like, like what the heck? So, so that's what my thing is that if MJ truly does want to sit just for the rest of the season, then for the sake of for this for, for the, the sake state, of sitting, yeah, for the sake of sitting and for the sake of next season and yep. and this future in state, I truly do think it needs to come out. Uh, because again, I've heard that from a lot of people who've donated to NIL, being like, yeah, well, this guy's driving around an eighty thousand dollar truck, and now I'm hearing conversations about him quitting and you know leaving the team. It, he's getting know? it for free, essentially, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the problem, the problem with all of that, and and I totally get that argument, right? But the way the NIL was designed is it's not pay for play. So they're they're two completely separate entities of one another. Um, it's almost like you're doing this in be, on behalf of uh, securing his services, right? Um, it's not based on oh, we'll we'll put a tank of gas in your car if you throw for three touchdowns this week, right? Like they're they're completely separate of one yeah. another. So, like, should there, like, and here's the other thing. This all NIL is, what is this, year three of NIL, I believe? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that right? Practically. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there's stuff that still needs to be figured out because as you start to see more of these th things happen, um, I think it just happened, what was it, with one of the kids in, like, Florida or Miami or something like that. Down in, I, it was down there somewhere where they basically, he took the money and then was like, I'm out, like, not not long after. And mm. I, I just don't know what kind of repercussions these companies or these NILs can do um, mm -hmm. and go after for, for. So I still think there's going to need to be some tweaking done to these models. But yeah. then it goes to the point where, well, who's going to regulate that, right? Because the NCAA has kind of washed their hands of this. Um, you know, you've, you've seen Congress try to get involved a little bit in some of these things. And you have, you know, state rep, you know, state legislatures trying to, trying to get involved in this stuff. So, I just don't know how you are able to wrangle all of this and and, and hold people accountable uh, in order to hold up hold up their end of the bargain or, or their end of the contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, D. Reap also bringing in a good point as well that 
uh, I do think that it's actually and that he thinks it's actually a benefit that the first game after this news is an away game, not a home mm-hmm. game, just because there's mm-hmm. a little bit less pressure on him being in Cardinal well, Stadium. It's a good yeah, point. Yeah, you don't get the crowd booing of, after his first incompletion or the first three and out, right? I really hope not this time. I I, I think no. I think this is a completely different situation. There, I, yes. I really do hope pray there's not going to be a booing after an incomplete pass like there was for sure. Um. But yeah, and then LJ bringing up point on a positive note. I'm excited to see, uh, for BA's chance to, uh, to write a nice ending to his career. If he can knock off Wake Forest, his return to Carter Finley, uh, you know, after you know, if he if he if he knocks off Wake Forest and Virginia Tech, his 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 game at Carter Finley is going to be electric. Newfound respect for the guy among fans. Um, yeah, love it sure. again. And because again, that's why I'm saying is that for for BA is that like even though this season has not gone as he has obviously wanted it to, like if he can ball out. It, I mean, then I'm not saying like, you know, this guy is going to be like, you know, you know, a high draft pick or anything like that. But I mean, yeah. you know, he, he can definitely impress agents enough, you know, from a free agency perspective, uh, for sure. Uh, and, and at least and then they from a legacy perspective, man, like, you know, like like we're talking about a game against Wake Forest, a game against Virginia Tech and a game against UNC. Like, you know, like these are you got, Especially you got that UNC rivals. game. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, again, Drake May versus Brandon Armstrong, like. Yeah. Oh, it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a gorgeous writing on writing on the wall for sure. Yeah. Here's uh, the other thing I'll I'll say. We kind of you know we were just talking you know the, the, when they brought up the point about it being on the road versus home. Um, BA won't have to look over his shoulder, right? Like he knows he is the guy at this point moving forward. Um, absolutely. And so I think that takes a little bit less pressure. Um, like you said, he can just go out and ball and just you know let it fly and um, just be himself and play within himself, and that he doesn't need to you know press to make plays in order to quote unquote maintain his job. Yeah. A hundred percent. Good point. Um, and, uh, also to, uh, uh, Kyle points out, yeah, Thursday, we are all Wahoo fans. Absolutely. <laughs> For uh, sure. uh, Virginia over Louisville. And it, it definitely does bring up an interesting point as well, which I have to remind everybody once again, in case somebody, in case anybody didn't tune in for our live stream yesterday, which make sure to go and check that out, which, uh, you know, shout as well. Again, we have our interviews with Gus, Gus Ritchie, 2025, Four star tight end commit coming out tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. So make sure you do not miss on that, miss out on that. Hit that subscribe button, hit that free notification bell so you do not miss out whenever we release those episodes. As those were awesome to say the least. Great, great insight for for state fans for sure. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, in terms of like keeping in mind that before the season, Vegas had our win total at six and a half wins with a little bit of juice on the over. So keeping in mind that basically per Vegas. They're saying seven to five is a good season. Basically, it's a little bit better than what they expected. Eight and four is like, wow, that's a great season. Because again, that's a win and a half more than what they were putting. Nine and three is like, or or nine and four, even, uh, you know, is is wow. That that's a phenomenal season per Vegas's eyes. So just keeping in mind that I know, you know, going into these into any season, you know, state fans, you know, want the AC championship because we haven't had AC championship for NC State in you know, over 50 years, you know, or about, you know, 50 years, 79, was 79. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so 45 years for, for football and then uh, 30 years between baseball, men's basketball and football, uh, football. So I get it for sure. Yeah, 80, 89 um, was uh last uh, uh, basketball championship. And the, well, I thought there was the one in the early nineties. Was there not? Okay. Maybe I, could I was, I'm tracking 89 but, in my head, but I could be wrong. I'm old and yeah. gray. Either way about, 30 years, give or take. It's been a long time. It's been it's one yeah. of the longest droughts. <laughs> I in, think we can in, agree in, on in that college, one. <laughs> in college in college sports. So I know we all want to get there. And yep. but I'm sitting here and saying that with everything that that has that you know we have gone through in terms of dealing with but going between MJ and Brian Armstrong, between all the issues we had on the offensive side, between the offensive line and the wide receivers, between the ups and downs that we saw early on with the defense. Being that we're sitting here six and three with a real, 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 realistic opportunity that we could have gone seven and two, even you know potentially eight and one, just talking about that Louisville game, we definitely should have won. Uh, now, obviously, yeah. hindsight twenty twenty, Louisville is a really good football team. So it's, it's it, looking back on it, you know, in terms of what Louisville's done since, it's not necessarily looked at as a bad loss, but it's a loss we should. It's, it's a game we should have won. Let's put it that way. We should have won that game. Yeah. So and and we're sitting here with a real realistic opportunity. I, I'm I'm setting my line at eight and four. I, I really do think eight and four is kind of that that all right. I I I'm happy with how we ended the season. 
If we go nine and three, I'm thrilled. If we're seven and five, uh, we, you know, we left a little meat on that bone for sure in terms of the yeah. regular season. So uh, just keeping yeah. everybody in mind in terms of expectations for us season. Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree with that, just knowing that we have the potential again, if we don't go out and beat ourselves, we don't go out and make stupid, you know, penalties, you know, to have turnovers, you know, we, we maintain good uh discipline on defense. It's all right there to go eight and eight and three. Uh or no, sorry, eight and eight and four, nine and three. Um and then you know potentially maybe get a ninth or tenth win in a bowl in a bowl game, uh, mm-hmm. depending on who that opponent is. And by the way, like if you look at some of these bowl again, we're getting ahead of ourselves because there's three games. But you start looking at these bowl predictions now. We're getting a little closer into the season. There's some New Year's Six uh, bowls there are available, or excuse me, not New Year's Six, but New Year's Day bowls uh, available mm-hmm. to state right now that they're being um, in the mix for. So still a lot to play for. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, keeping in mind that. You know, heading into next season, the guys that you have coming in uh, with the class 20 and 24, assuming that they all do come in. I know all state fans are going to yell at me saying, well, we don't know yet. They might leave. And it's like, OK, yes, I get it. But yeah, but we're going to know in about a month. We're going to know about early, a month. It's gonna, it's, early it's gonna signing period. Soon. It's going to be very yeah. soon. So uh, um, so so we'll see. But again, I, I truly do think in, in looking at the schedule for next year that we can really do. We, I mean, everything is lining up if, as of right now for But again. Let's finish about this season first. Let's focus on Wake Forest. I get it. I, I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of all the comments there. Um, but, uh, you know, Christian coming in here saying, I don't know if it's just smoke, but I've heard Georgia Tech has been in contact all season, you know, when it comes to it makes Morris. sense. He's from Georgia. And, yep, he is from Georgia. So, you know, and, and you know, the coach staff there has definitely gotten a lot of buy-in in terms of from a player's perspective. So, again, we'll see. It, it, it's all, it's all conversations right now. There's nothing yeah. solid. And that's why for me, I always have an issue talking about like conference realignment stuff, for example, because we know nothing. It turn, it's, it's, it's 99% of speculation from a fan's perspective. Yeah. Uh, Carson also bring up the point VT fans don't like Brennan. So that will be a very hostile environment. Interesting, interesting point being that he is a Virginia guy. So uh, yeah. And Brennan doesn't like Carolina because Carolina and Virginia were huge rivals. So it works exactly. both ways. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, Jason also pointing out a point. My stance on NIL is that a player should become eligible after one season with a program or immediately as a grad transfer. This would prevent chasing immediate NIL money. And I, think I like that's it in a, theory. I like it in theory, but again, it's, it's, <laughs> it, won't, it, won't, it won't overpass because you just yeah. the, the way the let you can't you can't prevent these people now that you've said that they can go out and make money on their name, engine likeness. You, you really can't put stipulations on it, but I like it in theory. Yeah. Um, and then preacher man talking about us. Uh, so the decision uh, made will be will be a wear gloves now. We're all dying to know. And uh, Greg, you kind of pointed out on the live show yesterday about how yeah. during the run plays he runs with two gloves, but then when he would pass, he'd only wear one glove, right? Yeah, yeah. Or potential for a pass, he was wearing one glove. Potential yeah. for a pass, he's wearing one glove. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, what's the weather going to be like on Saturday? Is it going to be cold? It was supposed to be yeah, 65 last time I saw. Yeah. Oh, I looked this morning. The high is 58. Oh, okay. It dropped a little okay. bit then. Okay. All right. So, so yeah. we'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah. Now at this point, you have no idea what you're going to see, but we'll see what happens. Um, D. Rupp uh, coming against 1979 football, 87 in basketball, and 92 in baseball. So that was where I got 90, 92 from. Was in baseball, he's uh, championship wise. Um, and uh, yeah. So with that being said, Wolfpack Nation. Uh, you know, it is a little bit after a ten, and uh, but you know. I want to first of all say once again, everybody, that I really hope everybody enjoyed this therapy session. Uh, you know, <laughs> and it was great having everybody in. A lot of great comments, a lot of great yeah. thoughts, and that was exactly what we were hoping for. Is again, keep in mind, this was not just us being the therapist for you guys. This was You're you right. guys also being a therapist for us. So <laughs> we're all in this together. I mean, we're all in this together, exactly. Um, and uh, you know, so again, y'all, let's let's just really just dive in. Brain Armstrong. QB one, let's support this guy. That guy is paint Winston red, like we did Durham. Paint Winston red, exactly, exactly. Because I really do believe, like Winston's not going to show up hugely. Like they don't show up hugely already, but they're especially not going to show up huge for a four and five Wake Forest team against NC State team that just beat Miami Clemson. That's that's just my speculation, but I feel pretty confident about that about that speculation. Um, so let's paint the paint Winston red, y'all. Let's dive into Brandon Armstrong. Let's support this guy and, and the whole team. We, and the whole team, especially, but yes, no, I mean, going, I, everyone's I, going through it. Well, I mean, again, I mean, I, I think it goes without saying, yeah, definitely the whole team, uh, 
you know, and, and again, I think it's there, but just again, y'all, all, all the cards are still on the table. Let's let's take it one game at a time. Let's see what this season has read, has for us. And uh, again, if if everything goes as you know as we think, then I still think we can have a, a very special season. Uh, you know, looking at it in limelight for sure. Even um, even more special if we can overcome these last three games. Honestly, oh for sure. After yeah. everything, this oh, entire season's been full of adversity. <laughs> well, I mean, again, and if I told you we had wins over at the end of the season, yeah. Again, if we do win out, we had we have wins over Clemson, Miami, uh, Wake Forest, and UNC. That's a good, pretty good year for me. That's, that's pretty good. It. I'll take yeah, it. So, exactly. but anyway, y'all, as a reminder, once again, y'all, make sure again, if you haven't already, hit that free subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you do not miss out whenever we release any of our new content, especially our episodes with Gus Ritchie. Part one coming out tomorrow morning, part two coming out Thursday. And uh, if you enjoyed this conversation, please do us a big favor and hit that like button. And also, too, make sure to uh, give us a follow, Tuffy Talk now on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, y'all. But we love you guys. Wolfpack Nation is the best fan base out there, hands down. No doubt about it. We are thrilled to be a part of it. And uh, we are excited to be in Winston-Salem with y'all this Saturday, cheering our boys on. But uh, we'll see y'all soon. And go Pack, y'all. Let's go.